Hey, how you doing? I hope you're having a really good day. I actually tried to start this video outside. I got, like, I, I had a little look. We have this communal kind of garden area in front of our building. And I ran out. I was like, yes, the coast is finally clear. Oh my God, yeah. Beautiful day outside. Set up shop, got sat down, got ready. And then, like, these kids came out and started playing, screaming and stuff. So I was like, I'm going to go back inside then. So today I wanted to talk about cognitive behavioural therapy, also known as CBT, and why it didn't really work for me. When I say it didn't work, I do think it did have its benefits for sure, but I also kind of went in there thinking that it was going to be a complete game changer and that I would no longer skin pick compulsively, I would no longer have to deal with dermatillomania on a day-to-day -day basis. I've had dermatillomania for 15 years almost, and I was referred onto it from my doctor back in, um, I think like 2015. So five years later, I can confirm that I still have dermatillomania, but instead now I kind of come at it with a different point of view. As I have grown, I've kind of developed a, a more compassionate relationship with my dermatillomania, which has helped a hell of a lot more than say like previous methods where I was having antidepressants to kind of numb out all feeling, not feeling as anxious, but then also not feeling happy or excited or kind of anything. Or, you know, trying these methods where I'm putting putting a throw or whatever it is over my mirror or wearing gloves indoors or like fidget things. I'll get into all of that in this video. I wanted to kind of ask you as well, if you have considered doing CBT, Cognitive Behavioural Therapy, maybe you've already done it. Maybe it's something you've had a little research into. Please comment in the comment section below if this is something that you have been considering or you have done it yourself. I'd be really interested to hear your thoughts. Obviously with this video, these are my experiences experiences with DPT that I did back in 2015 but I would be so interested to hear if you had a completely different experience I think you know let's help each other and one more thing if you haven't already please subscribe to my channel this means so much to me it's so awesome to kind of get to know you kind of get to know your experience and every time I meet a new person that is struggling with dermatillomania even if it's online like it just reminds me that we are really on alone and that was the whole reason why I started this channel was because I felt so deeply alone that I was like I've got to put myself out there and if this is how I do it then this is how I do it because the whole point was so that I could meet others and and that we could kind of help each other so thank you so much for all your kind words and support it means everything to me Okay, let's go. So CBT, Cognitive Behavioural Therapy, it's not like counselling. So if you've been to um, typical traditional counselling where you kind of sit with a trained counsellor and you kind of delve into the past, you, you talk about things that you know, experiences or memories that maybe kind of trigger a traumatic response or things that you know really impacted you that you hadn't really thought about and you're having to kind of lift that lid which can take a bit of time but is super useful for your healing and your overall dermatillomania progression or life progression in fact what cbt is instead of focusing on the past it focuses more on the present situation and your present behaviors the actions that you do right now and how they can kind of break things down in an analytical sense to make your life a lot easier i was referred on to it cbt from my doctor after taking antidepressants and being like i need more help than this this is really just not helping me the way that you think it was so i was put onto it and i was put with a lovely trained psychologist she was a mm, i mean she kind of looked not that much older than me she was really sweet really polite and friendly and these would be one hour sessions every fortnight i worked part-time at the time which gave me a great opportunity to go to these appointments but obviously like now I'm, I work full time, it's not that easy. So I'm from the UK, we have the National Health Service, the NHS. This meant the CBT wasn't like private, I wasn't pay paying for private help here, so I had to get put onto a waiting list for a few months before I was actually seen. And what would happen every appointment I'd go on, I would kind of explain a bit about what I had done in the past. I don't know, a couple of weeks, whatever, I would be given three, four pages, kind of a bit like homework, really, where I'm answering questions, kind of so that she could get to know what I did, what my behaviours were, what my thought processes 
were and the areas that I was picking and um, but also gave some examples on what I can do to kind of help myself so maybe have like a little fidget ball or like a um, some people use like a rubber band and they do this if they are feeling quite anxious they could like do the tapping techniques tapping and what that will do is over time it will like retrain your brain it will pick up on those sensations and the more you do it your brain will attribute it to feeling a certain way so that you know you can go do something that will make you feel better if you're feeling that way. So I was learning all these techniques every time I go to sessions but to be honest we didn't have a hell of a lot of time and it was quite in peculiar really because I had been to counselling naturally I was kind of inclined to talk about where I believe it started and everything but she was coming at it from quite an analytical point of view so she kind of just wanted to know what I'd been doing why I felt like that like helping me to be more observant of what I was doing from a more rational and logistical mindset so rather than like being totally in my emotions instead when things would happen I would like then question it and kind of break it down in my own mind so that I can connect the dots. Now I definitely think CBT did help me to do that and to be honest like five years later even though I still manage my dermatillomania actively even though the CBT didn't cure my dermatillomania per se, um, it did help me to gain a, a more of a logistical, more of a rational thought process. When it comes to dermatillomania, the over compulsive behaviours and my attitudes and, and what causes this, da, 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 which you know has helped me tremendously today, that definitely has improved my overall relationship with dermatillomania because the more you understand, then the more you can be patient with yourself and more compassionate. It definitely did help with that. I cannot fault CBT for helping me with that. The only thing was why I believe that putting all of my energy and hopes and dreams into thinking that CBT will completely change and, and cure my dermatillomania was mainly on the fact that I wasn't ready. Like, I didn't want to stop my dermatillomania. I didn't want it to go. And I know that sounds really crazy and you could listen to that and be like, uh, what you didn't want it to go <laughs> like what but the reason was because if you think about it like this right say you're like four year old you and you're really nervous and you're really scared and feel extremely like tiny and and the one thing that gives you a sense of joy it makes you feel protected it makes you feel happy it, it gives you a sense of relief is your like teddy and you're cuddling your teddy and somebody comes and like takes your teddy away like that's kind of how I felt in my mind I kind of felt like wait so this is to stop me from doing the thing that makes me feel good when I feel bad hmm and because of that I actually like started my CBT with quite a pessimistic quite skeptical cynical attitude overall. I went there and I kind of wanted to see what it was all about and kind of understand it but did I honestly think that it was going to cure my dermatillomania? No, mainly because I didn't really want it to. From my point of view I kind of felt like all right so you're going to teach me how to do things that's stopping me from feeling good and what do you propose I do? Okay, so every time I'm anxious, um, I'm going to do this or like I'm going to just avoid the mirrors. Yeah, all right. Like that won't give me the sense of satisfaction that compulsive skin picking does. So it literally is like a waiting game before I go back in there and do what I do best. That's how I felt about it. And because of that, it didn't work. It didn't work. It, the, the methods that I learned kind of threw them out of the window because I didn't feel ready to give Give that up. I felt there's a lot of pressure to do what I was saying that I was doing. Kind of build a relationship with your psychologist and you're going every week. There was a pressure to kind of say that you're doing better, like you're getting better with it. Oh yeah, great, yeah, it's working. Yeah, oh, I feel so much better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think that was also because a huge people pleaser thing. When it comes to dermatillomania, like we're constantly trying to please other people. That's a huge, huge thing that I know many of us suffer with. That was another pressure. So the pressure was building every time I was going there because I didn't really feel like I wanted it to work. I didn't really feel like the methods were 
going to help me long term anyway. They were strong enough that they were going to satisfy me enough the way that dermatillomania satisfied me. And I felt obviously like a huge pressure to say like, oh, I'm, yeah, I'm getting better. I'm doing really well. Yeah. Um, so in the end, I just kind of scrapped it and stopped. But what I want to say, though, is that if CBT is something that you're considering doing and you've watched this video and you're like, oh, OK, um, well, I don't know if I should do it now. <laughs> what I suggest is that you think about it, like take your time before you make that decision. Because I know after compulsive skin picking, it's really easy for us to be like, right, okay, I've got to do something about it. And I kind of talk about that on my video of five stages of a compulsive skin picker. I'll throw it up there if you want to go check that out after. But basically, like, it's really easy for us to make a snap decision when we're feeling extremely emotive, very frustrated, disappointed, stressed out, extremely anxious after skin picking. We just want to do something to undo the damage we've caused. When all those emotions kind of lift and it all kind of comes down, we, we calm ourselves down a bit what we may realize is like we feel maybe not that ready to do something as drastic as as that i know that sounds quite strange i know you could listen to that and be like no i really want to stop my dermatillomania <laughs> but what i am suggest is like if you do cognitive behavioral therapy go with a curious mind go with an optimistic mind please go with it as a let's learn something new let's see what how this can help my relationship with my dermatillomania help me to manage my dermatillomania and notice that i say the word manage instead of fix or stop because by managing your dermatillomania it means that there are all of that pressure to like it's got to go oh i can't do that it's all lifted there. And that is the main thing. I talk about this word quite often, pressure, and pressure creates dermatillomania. It creates those urges that make us go to make ourselves feel better. We are constantly feeling pressure from all different angles. The last thing you want is to do something like this and to feel pressure in CBT as well. I hope that if you do look into this, and it definitely has the power to help manage your dermatillomania a lot more. You can definitely come out of CBT training with a sense of hope um, with some things that, you know, really work for you. That's the great thing about it is that you're not getting talked at. You're not having someone be like, right, you do this because of this. Blah, 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 blah. There you go. Like you, the whole point is that you work together with the psychologist to figure out what works best for you. So your personalized approach to combat your usual behaviors might be completely different to someone else who does CBT but what matters is that it works for you and that you feel good about these new changes also take a little bit of time with it as well and please don't feel pressure to you know to report oh amazing progress it's changed my life thank you so much okay I'm gonna go now great thank you for everything goodbye see you later like because these things like take time they take a lot of time and the last thing you want is to wonder if you know you're being a burden to them of oh my god i bet all their other clients are like doing amazing and i'm the one that's not really making any progress and oh my god this is going to be like this forever as soon as you notice like that pressure sit yourself down in your own mind and ask yourself is this what i want to continue with do i feel ready for it am i in the right mindset for it and most importantly am i being honest with myself if I want to help my dermatillomania in this way? Or am I afraid of a life without it? Because a life without it is technically unknown and unknown is uncomfortable for me. It's really important that we ask ourselves because we don't often ask these questions because we're so dead set especially after skin picking, to eliminate it from our lives, to fix it. We just want to change. We just want to stop doing this, which of course is really understandable, but it's not often that we really take the time and think, maybe the things I've tried so far haven't worked because I haven't wanted them to work. And that is a hard realisation. That hit me, I don't know, I think it hit me like last year, and I was like, huh... 
right but once you understand that you can be more compassionate you can be more patient with yourself you understand that it is a marathon not a sprint and every time you know you have a slip up that is totally okay that's absolutely fine just get back on it the way that you would with anything else that you really wanted to prioritize in your life and, and you thought was really important for your healing and for your life journey and to feel good about yourself you know a slip up is fine eliminate that pressure as soon as you feel pressure observe it observe that how does that make you feel is that helping you no if it's not helping you that's fine then let's take that pressure away and let's see how your the relationship you have with yourself evolves in a positive way because i assure you it will i really hope that this video has helped in some way i know i ramble i do ramble a lot it's as if i really like the sound of my own voice Anyway, I'm gonna go work out now before I talk myself out of it completely and binge watch Netflix. So I hope you have an amazing day. I hope you have a great weekend. Put it in the comment section below if you have any thoughts on this. It is a really interesting topic. And as always, I love to hear what you think. So thank you so much. Let's speak soon in three days. Bye-bye.